so passionate about helping businesses grow and you absolutely have to market to grow your business. Give it all you got. The best is yet to come. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Chat and Grow. I'm so excited that you're here, and I'm very excited to have Kyle Benton with Benton Media. Thank you, Tiffany. Hey, Kyle. It's great to be yeah. here today. I've been really looking forward to this. Awesome, awesome. Well, Kyle is the co-owner of Benton Media, along with his wife, Felicia. Benton Media specializes in social media and video content marketing, a skill that has been perfected over many years. Kyle began in the media industry just out of college, and he worked his way up from camera operator at the local NBC affiliate Color, or we call it Color 8, Mm -hmm. um, to eventually a news anchor several several years later. Very nice. Through that time, he learned from some of the very best videographers in the industry. After leaving television news, Kyle began his career in marketing. He worked for Connoisseur Media for a number of years, learning how to combine the skills he perfected in television with business marketing principles. Eventually, his success caused him to go out on his own and bring those skills to the clients he loves so much like us. I'm so excited. I'm, I was so excited to hear too that you and Felicia are working together. So yes. um, congratulations yeah, very, on your new venture. Thank you, very blessed to be able to work, work with my wife. And uh, kind of a funny story about that. We both worked in television and that's how we first met almost I think six, six and a half years ago now, and she was my boss. Okay. So that's the reason why we're actually able to work together, right? Uh, because a lot of people are like, well, man, do you and your wife, how do you guys work together? Right. I don't think I'd ever be able to, and I'll be like, well, when we first met, she was my boss, so we learned how to work together from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. You kind <laughs> of had to, it, it was almost like a prerequisite. Like, yeah, you have to work together, and then, okay, let's get married. <laughs> right, yeah. Our relationship was built on that, so oh. it wasn't something we had to, you know, try to figure out. It was nice. You know, Dwayne and I, my husband, we've worked together for... Ever, I always say yes. it wasn't forever, but it feels like it. And I love it. I think it's such a good way to, I mean, you get to learn communication, more right. communication opportunities. Um, but I also understand it when people are like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. know how I could do that. I and know. and then we, that. you know, go do date night with them. And I'm like, yeah, you guys probably shouldn't work together. So, <laughs> so I think that's really good and good for you guys Thank on you. doing that. So um, thanks again, everyone, for coming. I just want to remind you that I'm going to start out by asking Kyle some questions. But this is really about getting value um, to you. So be uh, taking down questions, not just about what we're talking about. If you have any questions about digital marketing, marketing, growing your business, um, we're really here to uh, help you with that. So uh, I'm just going to steal some time with Kyle first, and uh, but do uh, write down those questions and then use your chat. You can either post your questions in chat or right here on Zoom, or you can tweet them to hashtag chat and grow at OMH agency. So Kyle, let's get started. So today we're talking about marketing, um, video in marketing specifically. Yes. Um, And people ask about this so much because it's so hot and it busts through a lot of the other content. It gets a lot more attention. Um, what are one or two emerging trends that you see in video specifically for social media? You know, um, one of the things that for most recently, you really don't want long form video um, on Facebook. And so what I have found myself with a lot of clients is, you know, really that 30 second to 60 second spot is generally the sweet spot. However, Facebook is changing its platform right now and introducing episodes in long form video. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's actually probably um, the emerging trend that I see the biggest, like Facebook Watch is Mm -hmm. now now out, which is the first episode service for Facebook, uh, where actual um, video makers and content creators are actually moving into long long form 30, 40, 45 minute long episodes that are being hosted on Facebook. And it's really interesting to see that trend emerging Mm -hmm. and uh, being what it is today, because it's been so opposite. Facebook algorithms have always operated with short term, you know, Know, short length video like micro creates, moments that's right yeah. it creates that engagement mm-hmm. um, so when it comes to you know emerging trends I definitely see that long form video is the way to go I think companies that are working on marketing and are um, um, talking about that content play mm-hmm. need to be figuring out how are they going to be producing that long term that long um long form video for Facebook specifically you know and there's a lot of different ways that companies can do that um you know, it's part of just putting on that creative cap and, and really um, evolving with content management mm-hmm. and creation. But um, it's pretty interesting to see the market going that way, mm-hmm. kind of so opposite from where it has been. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think the companies that figure it out and are ahead of it are the ones that are going to be able to take advantage of it once those algorithms are in place. And that's 
predominantly what Facebook is because, you know, Facebook, all they're trying to do, it's really simple. They're just trying to make money. And mm -hmm. the way they make more money is the more people that are on Facebook throughout the day. You know, already that's the way it is. I mean, you're constantly on Facebook on your mobile phone device. Right. Well, when do you look up and, and go away from your mobile phone? That's when you're watching TV. Right. Or that's when you're watching an episode on TV, right? right? So it's like, really we don't want smart. you to look up. <laughs> yeah, it's a smart play for them. Yeah. They're trying to condition today's user to be on Facebook all the time. Mm hmm yeah, that's awesome. And it is so counter to the trends that they've had. And what I think is fascinating about Facebook, don't you kind of feel too, when they have something new, they like push it in front of their users. So it's not right. like, I mean, when we saw Facebook Live come out, it was like, every, you got notified anytime yeah, anybody that exactly. you knew, who knew <laughs> someone, it was like, okay, they're that's live annoying. now. Yeah. But but that's, that's how they push. They have mm -hmm. attention. They have our attention. And so they use it when they push out a new thing. Well, and it's a really smart play on that because it also allows them to be able to test out new theories and new ideas as mm -hmm. well. And True. they're able to get a, um, you know, a group of millions upon millions of people mm -hmm. to test out these theories for yeah. them just simply by notifying them. Yeah. You know, so it's really smart and uh, it's a fantastic platform for them to be able to change, do big game changers and be able to get immediate results and reaction from their users. Um, you know, only if every company could do that. Yeah. Well, and you think about it as no matter how big your business is or how small it is, I think it's really fascinating that you, we can use something like Facebook. Number one, it's kind of, I always feel like it, it levels the playing field for different size businesses. I mean, obviously the enterprise size companies Right. get the first like would you like to try it out first you know <laughs> right. yeah. but uh, outside of that there's so much room for in um you know smaller companies to come in and they can compete with mid-size you know bigger companies mm -hmm. just by paying attention to these trends well and that's what i always say too you know facebook is a level playing field mm -hmm. i mean the budgets that you're able to spend on facebook may differ based on the size of your company but really the content or the um, production value of that content really is just whatever your ability is or what you are willing to hire for mm -hmm. to be able to have um, it, it's not it's not specific to only Fortune 500 companies that right. are able to go out there and produce that content. Facebook does not, and Facebook users don't react to that professional TV quality content on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's that organic, point the camera in my way, let me give you a moment mm -hmm. um, that's very educational and informative, mm -hmm. and really anybody can do that. And they want real people. Like yeah. when you're on Facebook, yeah, you want to see like your cousin's dog, yeah. and if someone has something to tell you, you want them to, it doesn't, it needs to not be something so different from the, it needs to be native. That's right. So, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Absolutely That's super agree. fascinating. Um, well, is there a different approach that you take with video for Facebook versus another platform like Instagram or, or even Twitter? So, I mean, do you even, like, do you use video yeah, on Twitter? No, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic question. You know, Twitter is... Um, a beast of its own. Mm -hmm. Twitter is very useful for following influencers or following a specific person behind mm -hmm. a brand. Um, as far as building business for Twitter, I, I have found it's very difficult to get a gaugeable ROI on Twitter for mm -hmm. a company. But like you're the CEO of a company and you know and you want people to be able to keep up to date with your business analysis and news and whatever. Twitter's fantastic for that. Mm -hmm. Now when you go over to Facebook and Instagram, um, very crucial in building business, gaugeable ROI on both of them. They both work very happily together because Facebook owns Instagram, so they both work really well together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do have a different tack that I personally like to use. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I like to push out on Facebook for clients. I like to push out a video and content um, that is really pushing their brand or their information or their education that they're trying to get out. I generally use Instagram as more of a behind the scenes approach for okay. that same brand. It's just the way that I generally like to do it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times your Facebook user and your, and your Instagram user are going to be the same person. Right. They use the same platform. So why do you want to post the same content on Facebook that you're also posting on Instagram? Because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, you check your Facebook and then you check your Instagram. Right. So it's great to be able to have your brand post two separate types of posts on both of the platforms. So generally speaking, I use you know a video on Facebook and then I will take a behind the scenes shot on Instagram oh, or nice. something like that. That's a really or, good way to compliment... Yeah, um, both campaigns because really. it gives the user a little mm -hmm. bit of that inside look and that yeah. behind the scenes and like whoa what I just saw on Facebook here's a little bit of a shot on how that happened yeah that's one tact I use Instagram loves beautiful creative photos as right well. so if I'm in a situation where I'm shooting something with a client and there is the opportunity to capture a very beautiful shot a very out of focus or a very in focus um, very composed shot I will often take that photo and use it on Instagram okay as well. 
Oh, very um, nice. And not use it on Facebook. So, um, really to answer the question, is it bad <laughs> to host the same content on both? No, I don't think it's bad to mm-hmm. do it. I just generally choose to use those two different ways of discerning content that's posted on, on each for a company. Mm-hmm. Um, just for the simple fact that the user is using both platforms and they usually are using them at the same time. Yeah. So you might as well hit them with something different on each. Yeah. Well, and kind of going back to that, I think that's, first of all, it's a really good idea. I love that you do that because you're kind of taking a campaign and then maximizing what you're doing with it. But I think it's good to say that it's okay to use them on both, but it's good to remember that I like to break it down because if, if a company is just starting out in social media, it's really hard to wrap your head around like, <gasps> you know, I have to like yeah. do all these different and really Facebook is different from Instagram. Mm. The You know, you're going there, you're expecting to see something different. Instagram is a lot more like it needs to be pretty, you know, things like that. And Facebook's a lot more like relational, right. you know, and so... Um, but if you're a small business starting out, like you said, it's okay to use the same on both, mm-hmm. but it's even better. Like you're taking it up a notch when you're able to, uh, it's so on brand to take like a behind the scenes or have some kind of spin on it where it is a little bit different, but you don't have to set up a whole new photo shoot right. for one versus the other. So it's all about like growing your presence, um, and, but using those opportunities that you've already set up to make it a little bit different. Because on agree, one yeah. side, too, because um, I do, that happens to me all the time where I'll look at someone on Facebook and it's like, oh, hello again, you know, yeah. Instagram. I yeah. still love your picture, right. but <laughs> um, but sometimes I missed it on Facebook yeah. and I'll see it on Instagram. I'm like, whoa, this is, I love this. Where'd this come from? And then it's like, oh, yeah, they did post it on Facebook. So it is, as far as reach, sometimes well, it's good. Yeah, it can be a double impression. Yeah. Right? I mean, if it's uh, if it's a thirty second video that you have put on Facebook for your company about um, you know this new service that you're providing and you're trying to gain interest, and then you take that video and you also post it on your Instagram, I mean, I'm not saying that's never mm-hmm. a good good idea because right. you you can get a double impression because like I said, you open Facebook and then you open Instagram and see the same thing. Yeah. Right? Um, all I'm trying to say is that you probably don't want to do it every time. Right. Because then you're going to start getting people to not even want to check out your Instagram. Right. You're going to be like, well, whatever I see on Facebook, it's already on there. And then you lose their engagement. Well, and what, like your idea, and again, there's a lot of ways to do it, but specifically the idea that you have, I love because if I were to see something on Facebook and then I flip over to Instagram and I see it behind the scenes, then I'm going, okay, now just like my first story where it's like, oh, did they post this on Facebook? Oh, there it is. But instead of seeing exactly the same thing, it's more of it. So I think that's really good. I think that's a really good way to um, optimize the opportunities. So, um, so what social media opportunity do you think is the most overlooked right at this moment when it comes to video? So I think the opportunity to um, create content and really um, archive the successes of your business. I think that's the overlooked um, aspect of video right now when it comes to social media marketing. Um, a lot of clients and a lot of, I'm going to say specifically small businesses that are trying, you know, they're in the everyday grind and the hustle of just growing their business, running their small amount of employees, just keep their operations going every day. Mm-hmm. Um, they look at video content creation as a very intimidating and a very difficult thing for their social media. And I feel a lot of them just go to the traditional play of marketing, mm-hmm. which is just advertising. And marketing and advertising are two very different things, right. okay? So I think that a lot of businesses, they just go automatically to thinking, you know what, I need to advertise my product and service. If I can come up with a creative video to do that, that's great. I think that is um, a big problem. Mm-hmm. I think that one of the most overlooked things right now in social media video is the act of just documenting the successes of your company mm. and just kind of almost thinking of your video shoots as your personal videographer just highlighting what you do, why you do it, and mm-hmm. allowing people inside to be able to um, grow with you in your successes and your failures. Okay. And I think if people concentrated on just you know documenting what they're doing as their business grows, the sales are going to come from that. It's that soft sale approach that people are actually engaging with on social media um, instead of the you know come in today and get fifty percent off and you buy one mm-hmm. type of thing. If you just can turn the camera on and build that brand and build that awareness around you, just talking about your company, Mm -hmm. um, that is what's getting so much traction today. Yeah. Um, You know, and I think that that's a a big play 
Well, and it's looking at the long term. You know, I think a lot of people look at social media as being transactional and it's like the opposite of transactional. So you think about it when, I mean, think businesses need to think about like, how do you use Facebook? You know, you get to know people, you know, it's even if you already know them, you want to keep in touch with them. And so if you're following a business, that's the feel you want to get. You want to, and I think that that's a really good suggestion, one that I think even we can take home um, as you help us with our video as well. But um, it's just taking that, like just people getting to know who we are and, you know, other businesses too, as they're developing their video and not making it so fancy, just kind of like, you know, what have you done? Yeah. What are you doing? Absolutely. Who are you? You know? you know, I think something that goes hand in hand, if I may say two things, mm-hmm. is that I think people and I think companies in general and brands get too caught up on likes. And right. how many people are liking this? And man, there was only 20 likes and I was wanting 200 likes. And it's like, you know what? If I could get everybody to just not think about right. likes, that'd be <laughs> great. I don't need likes to feel good about myself. Right. And I don't mean that in a bad way or in like a demeaning way mm-hmm. if you are all about likes. Mm-hmm. But if you just post out the content, eventually it will happen. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, you know, most things that are successful, the quicker they, they rise, the faster they fall. Right. And if you're just documenting this content, you know, and you're hosting out on your Facebook and your Instagram and you buck at it on your website, and you got it on YouTube mm-hmm. and just these successes of your company and the failures are being done and these soft sales are happening and people are just learning about your product and your service through you and the mm-hmm. brand that you've created as your persona, mm-hmm. um, you're going to get so much long-term um, yeah. sales and effects and growth in your business than if you're just concentrating on likes. Right. Like, Who cares? Who cares about likes? Just put out some quality content that's going to inform people because eyeballs will see it eventually. Right. I 100% agree with this. In fact, um, it's so funny. Um, This is, I probably shouldn't say this, but um, so, okay, first I'm going to say, and I can't say this and I don't feel bad about it, but um, (laughs) I was in real estate for over 20 years and um, Dwayne and I, we spent the first part of it selling, helping people sell houses and then the rest of it we were investing. We referred a lot of business to other realtors that we Realtors, excuse me, that we really liked and trusted. Um, during the time that we helped people buy and sell, we always said open houses are for sellers because mm. we never, like, we didn't, we weren't looking for buyers right. to to represent, and so we sure. just felt like this doesn't sell your house, but we know you need it, you know, to feel better. <laughs> and so <laughs> right. here yeah. you go. And yeah, um, it's very similar. Very and similar. so I feel, and now that I'm in marketing, and we um, do these really. Uh, I love our campaigns that we do for our clients um, for that reason. Like it's all about, and not as a commercial for us because like other people do it too, but just it's such a, it just works, you know, because you're just out there and you're, um, it's like something that lasts versus this flash in the pan. Um, But I, in our company, we have a nominal, well, nominal, it's actually a pretty decent uh, comparatively um, budget for Facebook boosts and we get to control it we're just like we do it we don't talk to you about it a lot just because but it's all about doing the things that our clients want but we don't really I mean it does have value long term but um, it's like it's about likes. Mm-hmm. I, I just know at the end of the month, if they don't have enough likes, I'm in trouble. Yeah, and the first rule of me them, is yeah. I don't want to be in trouble. So we yeah. do. We build it in and we say, okay, we're going to, and, and everybody knows it. Like we say, like, this is what we're going to do. And I'll tell, like in our first meeting, I'm like, we do this for you because I know you're going to be upset. If, so it's not a secret, but, um, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. you probably feel, I mean, I feel, yeah. I'm feeling it. Like you feel the same way a little bit yeah. where it's like, well, yeah, I'm constantly everybody loves likes, but if you really know marketing and you really know how social media works, I feel like these videos are about building um, almost like a a repertoire of people can go back and look. And if they go through your feed, they really kind of get to know who you are. And people work with people that they like and that they trust. And you're building this yeah. Just foundation of that. Well, is that exactly, accurate? That's, that's <laughs> totally what it is, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you and I have both been involved with business groups and that mm-hmm. work off of that principle of referrals. Yeah. And the reason why you refer, there's the science behind it, is because you refer to people that you do know, like, and trust. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's exact. you're doing the same thing on, on social media. And it doesn't even always have to be through a video. I also don't think every post should be a video as right. well. Uh, you know, and that all comes as part of social media management, managing what the, what the expectations are for the page and what, the, what it should look like. But it is. It's building that that baseline foundation of trust um, because today's consumer is the most educated consumer that's ever been alive. Mm. Um, you're never going to get a more educated consumer other than in the future. Right. Um, today, everything is researched before something is bought. Mm-hmm. Um, people do not care about a brand name 
necessarily anymore. Um, loyalties uh, no longer exist, in my opinion. Um, it's all about the price. It's all about the service. It's all about the quality. Um, those are the big deciding factors. So people want to connect with somebody behind a brand. Mm -hmm. or somebody uh, in place of a brand or somebody associated. They want to have a personal connection before they buy. They don't care anymore that Walmart is the lowest price mm -hmm. leader in the world. Right. Um, it's not the name anymore. In fact, people now are going away from the name specifically to go local and shop mm -hmm. local. So I completely agree with you that um, it's building that baseline of trust mm -hmm. and social media can do it so effectively. In fact, there's companies and large corporations that I do social media management for and we have to be on the phone every day talking about reports. I mean, we, you know, we're going through the, the Facebook and Instagram reports daily. Mm -hmm. I never bring up likes ever. Okay. And even if they do, they're like, wow, check that out. It's like, oh yeah, that's great. Well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about views or let's see what, what devices they were using. These people, yeah. you know, that engage with the ad. The behavior. That's, uh, yeah, the behavioral. Um, statistics uh, so much more important mm -hmm. than just seeing how many hearts and sad faces and <laughs> signs, you know are well, on that post. And research is showing that fewer people are actually clicking like, like mm -hmm. they'll see it and enjoy it, but then they won't click yeah, like. Right, so I mean, right. even that, I just think it's, I think it's good. I think it's nice that we have those metrics to kind of, you know, like someone's out there. You yeah, know? absolutely. But I just. I'm really happy to see that we're moving away from being so reliant on it as feeding our own, like, yay, I'm so happy to see that. So right. well, let's go to a question. I still have more questions for you, okay. but let's jump jump over to questions. So we are taking questions now. Anyone um, on the call, feel free to either post on the Zoom chat or uh, tweet it, hashtag chat and grow at OMH Agency. So we have a question from Jessica Baldwin. Uh, she says, some advertisers may think that they can't afford to do good video. How would you mitigate this concern? <laughs> I deal with this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's first kind of break it down to where most consumers of video, or I'm sorry, most companies that need video content come from. Okay. Okay. This is what they think. They think of these huge booms. They think of this times 10, mm -hmm. all right, with microphones all over the place and three camera systems, you know, and a director's chair that goes up and oh, down yeah. and lights and That'd all that. That'd be so awesome. That's what they're thinking. Yeah, yeah it's right. fantastic. Very expensive. There's a yeah. time and place for that. <laughs> yeah. So people automatically think, okay, well, in order for me to have a type of video that does not look like I just held my phone up and did it myself, mm -hmm. it's going to cost, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars. I think the best way to mitigate that um, is to sit down with the client, actually see what their expectations are and see what they need. Mm -hmm. And then just be able to be able to provide, um, to answer your question, Jessica, be able to provide them um, with the actual realities of the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, you do not need a $10,000 HD camera and a director and a producer to be able to pull a video shoot off. I think oftentimes bringing people down off of that high expectation of like, holy crap, can I make that happen? Mm -hmm. Down to, let's see what other companies are doing and let's see how it can be replicated very affordably. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, I mean, Facebook's full of it, of, of brands and companies out there that are just killing it mm -hmm. with just a guy in front of the camera and they put a black and white filter on it okay. and there's some text at the bottom. Okay, right? yeah. So I think a lot of times if I can sit down with a business owner and say, look, here's some things that are working. Mm -hmm. Here's some things that I have done that are working. And it's literally me bringing my $1,000 camera instead mm -hmm. and doing, you know, just you talking about your brand or about what you're doing or a new service that you're providing. And then, you know what, in the background, post-production, I put all of the graphics on for you mm -hmm. and boom, here you go. Right. And you do not spend tens of thousands of dollars. And then all of a sudden they see it. And when they post it on their Facebook page and they, you know, do all the correct boosting and all that, they see it start taking off. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden their expectations of the results that they were wanting matches the price that they were wanting to pay oh, gotcha. instead of what they were expecting to pay, right. if that makes sense. So, you, you know, if some advertisers may think that they can't afford to do good video, the best way to mitigate that concern is by simply telling them straight up and saying, listen, we don't have to bring a Hollywood production studio mm -hmm. here. Okay. Well, and honestly, That's... you don't want to, and I'll just kind of share my take on it too. Yeah. And you can holler if, if I'm off base, but, um, one thing that I feel, um, in fact, when, when I go and we hire someone to help us with video, my thing is, um, that hold on real quick. Um, sorry. Yet. Um, so one of the things that was really important to us is that we're able to, it, it needs to look like it's. Like I did just grab my phone, but I want it to look nice. So it's this kind of push and pull of, I want it to look natural. I don't want it to look overproduced. 
Um, you know, and usually when someone knows how to do video, it's really hard to get it more lifelike. Like I want it to not look contrived. And so it's, it's a little bit of a difficult uh, balancing rope to even be on. So if you can find a professional video uh, professional who's willing to go, yes, I get it. You want it to look like it belongs on Facebook, but I, it needs to be finished. Like, I do not want to grab my phone. I want someone to pay right. attention to, like, there are people walking behind you that's super distracting, which is what I, you know, the feedback I got from our amazing videographers when we were doing, uh, like, just a news video. It was like, hey, people are walking by. Let's not do it here. And things like that that I'm not paying attention to. And if I had my phone, I wouldn't have even thought about it. I would have seen it on Facebook and gone, oh, my gosh, I need to redo it. So having a professional who can finish it so that it isn't clunky but still leave it be, make it look like it's from a real person trying to tell a real story. I think it's a really good balancing act. And I honestly, I think um, for the, there, I, I, I always say there's like a micro moments video and then there's a, an asset video is how, what I call the other ones. And for the micro moments video, I feel like overproducing is actually a detriment. I think uh -huh. it's not I even agree. a good thing. So I agree. If I could build on that just yeah. briefly just so I can I'm trying to just answer Jessica's question as specifically as I possibly can you know and I think advertisers often can think they think of TV quality commercials when they think of video um, you know so I think by simply saying listen Facebook is not the platform for a television commercial right it just it just isn't unless you pin it or you right. look for your cover photo right. or yeah. something. Yeah, but exactly. not as a but micro like, moment. Right. Yeah. Not not as the typical um, yeah, 30 to 60 second video, you know, that we're using to again build your brand and your content. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you first off let them know, listen, we do not need a television commercial for your weekly video posts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that right there is gonna cut off thousands exactly. of dollars. Exactly. What we do need is these things that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. I think that's what mitigates the concerns and that's how you really sell them on it. For the simple fact, Facebook is not NBC. Right. I mean, it's just not. It's not your television. Right. It's not what the consumers are wanting. Exactly. Great. Right. Good point. Well said. Okay, we have another question from Ginger. When do short videos for Facebook and or Instagram, oh, when doing, I'm thinking, when doing uh, the videos, uh, can one use photos with music, narration, graphics, or should it be an actual video? I'm going to get one, your feedback, and then I have I have some feedback too, but I want to hear what Kyle Can one say. use photos with music, narration, graphics, or should it be an actual video? Oh, I, uh, so, so like, like animated a, graphics. Yeah, so like where it's like right. transitioning, I'm guessing. <laughs> this is so. fantastic. Um, yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah, this is a, a very, very Jessica's good question. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can. This is where you're going to get into an issue is when you need to apply money on Facebook or on Instagram, they do not allow you to boost posts that have too much text on them. Correct. Okay? So in an animated situation where there's too many graphics or there's too much words that are going on, Ginger, um, Facebook, they'll put it through. But when you put the campaign through, it's going to say that it is limited how many eyes are going to see this because there's just too much text. Mm -hmm. Facebook is wanting to move video away from text because that's the whole point of video. Because mm -hmm. you can do text in a status update. So why do you need video? So they're mm -hmm. trying to manage um, the content that's being put out there well, and for let's, that specific reason. And let's remember why. All fa I mean, Facebook cares about money. But the way that they monetize is user experience. Mm -hmm. So they, I would not venture to say that I know Facebook's audience better than Facebook knows it. Absolutely. I would have to guess that they probably put some money into <laughs> studying their people. And so the fact that they're telling me that it's bad content to have too much text, it's like, oh, okay. Like, I believe them. And so I've had a lot of clients come to me and say... Not, and actual just businesses asking me questions about Facebook and they're like, you know, I had an ad, why did it get kicked out? And it's, and then I look at it, they've even had, like I had a real estate agent come to me and, and she was saying, um, I had a picture, I didn't actually put text over it, but it was a big plat um, billboard. And I said, well, yeah, but like that's words. And they're like, oh, why? And, and to me, it's like, why? like. If Facebook has said that their audience doesn't want to see it, yeah. I believe them. Yeah, and so instead of trying to get around the rules, it's just all about, so what do they want? It's a good time, actually, I feel, to kind of dig into what people mm -hmm. do want. Which um, So how about, um, let's kind of move on then from the text part to like the images. Because we see that a lot where it's like, you know, images, right, right, videos. Right. Like, What are your thoughts about that? So I like a very, I, I like as clean of a video as possible. 
okay? And you've seen a lot of my work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's organic video. No filters are being used. Mm -hmm. We use the art and the creativeness of the photography to be able to pull out what you would generally need layers and photos for. And then what I always do is I put the business's brand. You put a logo. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. Beyond that, it gets a little too much. Mm -hmm. um, it gets too busy. Um, you really, again, what is the whole outcome of any Facebook or Instagram campaign that we're trying to run? We're ultimately wanting to get the user to connect mm -hmm. with that person. And the more fluff and the more you know distractions that you put on the screen mm -hmm. just takes more of that user experience away mm -hmm. of connecting with you and specifically what you're trying to sell mm -hmm. um, you know or achieve with your campaign um, so yeah is there a place for it yeah I think there's definitely a place for images there's there's a way I just ran a campaign um, actually for a company that was doing a giveaway a, ch a charity giveaway mm -hmm. and the winners had to carve pumpkins and the winners of the pumpkins won this money that they could donate to charity. So it was pretty cool. Uh, we had the owners of the company announce the winners, you know, and then we faded in the photo of that person with the winning pumpkin, mm -hmm. right? It was in and it was out literally in six seconds, mm -hmm. okay? Um, things like that, I think, can be very effective. Mm -hmm. I think if you place graphics at a specific point in the video, it can be very, very... Um, just, I think a lot of people just tend to go overboard yeah. right? because they're either insecure about the way they looked on video mm -hmm. or they're, they don't like what was said and they're trying to distract from it. Mm -hmm. um, well, and, you know, so it's kind of a double-edged sword a little bit. And too, like I was just thinking about this because my own feeling is like, you know, like a lot of people try to trick Facebook and have just one image and make it a video. Yeah. Like that drives me crazy. Yeah. However, Facebook themselves create that picture board where Photos are flying in. So, I mean, if they're doing that, that tells me that there's a place for it. Like you said, there's a place for that to happen. So, and I know sometimes that's what people prefer to do than that. So, um, I hope that helps, um, Ginger. That was a really good question. Um, just holler if you want us to clarify on anything like that. Um, and let's see here. Um, okay, so we have another question from Jessica. We have about, I'm going to be taking questions for 10 more minutes, so be sure to post them. I have a couple more I want to ask Kyle before he goes. Um, so go ahead, um, lay it on us. But Jessica has another question. She would like to know um, our opinion on Facebook <laughs> Live. Kyle, what's your That's opinion on Facebook Live? So coming from the news industry, Facebook Live, I feel is perfect for news, mm -hmm. okay? It allows anybody to be anywhere at any disaster at any given point and actually be able to give the, the, the details of what's going on mm -hmm. specifically as it's happening. I think it, Facebook Live, in my opinion, its number one platform that I think it's the most useful for is broadcasting news in mm -hmm. the moment, okay. all right? Um, you know, as far as a business aspect, it's... it's um, it's a catchy thing. It's a love-hate real, relationship really is what is. it is. It's like, like the, I love it and I hate it. <laughs> the theory behind it is fantastic. Yeah. But you are going to have to have so many followers on your page mm -hmm. that are notified when you go live. And then the percentage of those that are actually going to watch when you go live, mm -hmm. you've got to have some compelling content. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be something that's going to keep them there. Mm -hmm. It just is. You know, if you're a Facebook page and you got 300 to 1,000 followers and you go live and you're just trying to do a you know, roll out a new product or something mm -hmm. like that. I'm telling you right now, it, you're not going to get the results. That's not live, that's not live yeah. hard hit. It, it's almost like a, we now interrupt your yeah, programming. That's the way I if think it's it, that cool, yeah. definitely use it. If it's not, then maybe do a put together video. Yeah, I would much rather do a, a video because you're just going to be disappointed. There's going to be six. And so are your followers, yeah. honestly, because they're going to be like, whoa, you think this is news? Like, right. this is not that right. exciting. And after 60 seconds, they're just going to turn it off anyways and keep scrolling. If you get them for 60 seconds, and it's yeah, not that exciting that's, that's a long time like you're gonna lose them right away and again when you're on Facebook it's about building who you are I'm not in real life like not who you are to you but who do you are to mm -hmm. I mean perception's everything and so if you're out there and you're like oh, I have breaking news I know that you're trying to look at the latest dog video but right now you need to hear what I have to say and if it's really boring people are gonna be like okay well every time she goes live I'm shutting that off you know right. so but if all of a sudden you break in and you're like, you know, oh my gosh, I, um, in fact, I, we have some clients and they go live quite a bit and I like it because they, um, it's, it's like, I just had a thought and I want to tell you all mute me if you don't want to hear it, you know, and, and actually they're, um, they're very motivational and they have people that they encourage to like make huge life changes and things. And so to me, that's a really good use of it, even though it's not breaking news, right. but they have people that they're like, 
I just needed that. You know, like I've been just like going through my day like normal and you just broke in and changed my state, you know? And so I think if you're in a business, there are definitely ways to use it, but I feel like, um, it's just got to be calculated. It's not new anymore, so we yeah. should know better. Yeah, exactly. It's just, <laughs> it was it's, new, and we could screw up, but now it's like, okay, so you should probably think about it twice before yeah, you go live. That, that, that's <laughs> and I exactly. and I know sometimes I go live. It's not that exciting, but... You know, something that's really a, a very cool application that is like at the big national tech shows. Oh, yeah. Like NES or something, or like Apple when they're Like products. you're somewhere where the other people want to be. That's exactly And right. you're like, oh, it's this huge. is what I got. Yeah, yeah it's like, that'd hey, be a good you one. know, hey, I, I'm, I'm out at the, you know, tech show in California, and they're oh, yeah. unveiling the brand new Like iPhone if you went 15. live, I'd be on. I'd be like, yeah, oh, right. Kyle, you're there. I wish yeah. I was there. <laughs> well, I totally want to see. Yeah. Well, there you go. At least I know that I'll have <laughs> Yeah, I will totally watch that. <laughs> if you are where I want to be, and, it, and that could be like a food show, it could be a lot of different places. Yeah. I'd be like, oh my gosh, now what, what did he just cook I want to know so yeah, right. um, so again it just goes back to your brand and the people who want to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. and if you have something either you're where they want to be or you have something new to say now I, I, that adds I will tell you let's say that you are a business and you have found that topic you have mm -hmm. found you know maybe you plan, are planning honestly there's this brand new product that's coming out mm -hmm. and it's huge and it's industry changing right and you want to do a 30 minute Forum and have people. So what you can oh, do like you, you want feedback? Up, yeah, you want yeah. feedback. What you can do is you can set up a campaign and boost that campaign that you're yeah. going to go live at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Okay, you spend a certain amount of money and say, hey, this time next week at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, you know, we're going to be going live for 30 minutes to roll out this life-changing product, you know, something mm -hmm. big, and then you boost it for couple weeks or something like that to mm -hmm. get eyeballs on it. You know, you can even set up an button and have people you know those types of things i mean if you can put that type of thought yeah. behind a campaign i think facebook live can be very perfect useful. problem is your everyday small business person um that's thinking about facebook live isn't going to have the resources or even really have the um time to be able to put together a facebook live event oh, that is going you. to garner that much engagement if that makes sense yeah and i just want to kind of um just kind of sidetrack and it's not really sidetrack but um like, I appreciate that Kyle and other uh, videographers or video pros are willing to offer uh, packages that are affordable, that aren't overproduced that for this medium. Um, but I, I just want to encourage small businesses or people who are trying to do some kind of proof of concept and, you know, you're just bootstrapping as you go, grab your camera. Like, even though we're like, oh my gosh, it's so much nicer to have it all finished. It is. It is nicer. And it's the best way to do it. But just start somewhere and but just put some thought behind it, I think is a big takeaway for whether you do it yourself or whether you have someone come in and do it for you. Um, I brought this up last week, too, but I have a friend um, and she's just got this big personality and she's like, I just don't know how to do social media. And I'm like, dude, just like just have your friend on, grab a camera yeah. and, and record you because you're hysterical. Like if I watched you, I wouldn't care that yeah. the sun's shining through the phone and I can't see mm -hmm. your face. I would because at some point you would move around enough that I would see it. So don't be afraid if you have a campaign or you have an idea or even if you're small and you only have 30 followers and but those followers are like, why didn't I know about that? If there, I always feel like if there are four people that really wanted to hear what you had to say, it's worth saying. I mean, those are your people. Yeah, and so, absolutely. and what's going to happen is you're going to attract more people that want to hear those kind of things. It's just a matter of, I think too many businesses, I think we're, we're trying to kind of separate the herd is like, stop just doing crap and, mm. you know, like try it and don't be afraid to try something new, but put some thought into it. Don't, Go, oh my gosh, Facebook Live is huge. I need to do it. And then it's like, hi, I just got this cat, you know? And you're like, I don't <laughs> yeah, care, you know? Right, so yeah. why did, why you're a dentist? Like, why are you telling me this, you know? So you brought up a point that I actually have said a lot is that let's talk to the brand new business owner, okay? Mm -hmm. you're, I mean, it's a startup. Yeah. Every dollar matters. And you're wanting to get into the social media game because you know that's where you need to be, but mm -hmm. you just don't have the money. Honestly, I'm the number one advocate of saying just turn your iPhone on. Right. All right. Have your have or your Android. spouse or, or your Android. <laughs> uh, have have your spouse turn the phone on you and just mm -hmm. start documenting your business. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, what what's stopping you from doing a thirty second cell phone video 
phone, mm -hmm. you know, on your Apple or Android device, <laughs> and, and just saying, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, it's a brand new business that I have, this is what I do, check out my website or check out my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. you know, start somewhere. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, and start building it up. Mm -hmm. And as you start seeing that engagement happening and people starting to, you know, um, reply and sales maybe starting to yeah. increase and things, then you can start forming a marketing budget. I you'll mean, be like, thank goodness companies. I don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. That's what you'll be saying. Yeah. You're like, thank goodness I can bring someone on to... That, that's exactly that's right. That's the next I mean, step. Small businesses in general don't start out with a 5 to 6% you know, right. mar marketing budget for their mm -hmm. company to begin no. with because, I mean, good night they're just trying to get equipment to right home, you know, right or whatever staying up all night yeah you know, doing it themselves so i 100 percent so. agree with you and i tell people that all the time in fact there's clients i've sat down with that i've straight up said listen you don't need to be spending money right now because you can't like you need to put food on your table you need to pay for rent and you don't need to be worrying about that yeah like here's some things you can do on your own for free right. and i will happily give you those details because I want you to win in business. Right. So be sure to be asking those questions. So we'll, we'll, we'll be fielding them. And I could always bump them by Kyle, too, and, and see what he, his thoughts are. So let's ask a couple more questions. Um, Jeff wants to know, what is the rule of thumb for Facebook video link? Very good question, Jeff. This is actually something that's evolving right now. Um, up until just recently, the rule of thumb I have always said is you really don't want to go past two minutes. Okay. Not for the simple fact that you can't get views on it. It's mm -hmm. engagement for that, okay? Me personally, when I'm going through my Facebook feed, and think about it yourself, Jeff, if you are going through Facebook and you come across a video that's engaging and you're really enjoying it, how long will you actually stay on it before mm -hmm. moving on? Facebook is a format, it's a platform that encourages scrolling. That's what it is, you're trying mm -hmm. to keep up with everybody. So what you wanna do is try to make your message as concise as possible and get the point across. It kind of goes with your moments that, that you've talked about. Mm -hmm. Facebook That's a Google thing. That's that. their word, micro moments. Right. And it's per <laughs> but it, it applies to Facebook. Exactly. And and you know, you got that 30 to 60 seconds. Now, with these new platforms that Facebook is rolling out, like Facebook Watch and going into mm -hmm. episode, I believe Facebook's gonna be moving in more of a subscription platform for some of these things. I think it wants to eventually compete with Hulu and Netflix. Mm -hmm. Now that's unfounded. I'm not saying there's research mm -hmm. on that. It's my gut feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that they're wanting to So when it happens in a year. Yeah, Kyle you said can it say now. It. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy who said it. I fit, honestly, it's the smart play. Yeah. I mean, if you're Facebook, you got billions. And you're already of users. there. People Why? are making phone calls yeah. through Facebook. Yeah, Please exactly. Don't call me through Facebook, I mean, but people do it. Yeah, and they're paying through Facebook already. Yeah, I mean, Facebook Messenger. You know, they roll out the payment. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so I think that's that's where they're going. So they're starting to condition people mm -hmm. to get used to watching longer forms of video. But I would say so right this most, second, right this second, I would say thirty to sixty seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can go a, a minute thirty. It's just better to be mm -hmm. engaging content and be mm -hmm. just know the longer you go, the more chances you're going to have of people falling off and not mm -hmm. finishing what they started and the message that you're trying. To so do. don't bury the lead. Every that's exactly like whatever right. it's lead like. With the lead. Yes, lead with yeah, the lead. That's so exactly right. so hopefully um, that answers your question, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to back to Ginger. Um, uh, thinking about booking time for a particular photo shoot, would it be worthwhile to plan ahead to avoid the cost of an additional photo shoot? Um, maybe change of clothes or background and use the additional video at a later date. Um, realize if the info is timely. Uh, okay. So I guess, um, so Ginger, if I understand you correctly, um, so, okay, I'm going to tell you how we do our photo shoot and I'll see if um, this makes sense to you. And then I'm going to yeah, also, yeah, I'm going to tack on to um, feedback that my friends have had of what they would be concerned about. So when, um, when Kyle and Felicia show up, I have different things that we're going to talk about. So I already know what we're going to talk about. We don't do a clothing shoot or we don't do clothing changes. Uh, we could, and I did have a friend say, oh my gosh, I would have like three outfits. And <laughs> I am one of those like action comes before anything else. So if we have a good idea and we want to do it, anything that stops me from taking action is out. Like if, if I'm like, okay, if I have to bring three sets of clothes and I'm probably, it's going to take me two extra months to mm -hmm. do it. It's no, I want to do it now. That's more important. So if you're offended, like watch our Facebook and if you're like oh my gosh Tiffany wears that same outfit every time <laughs> then maybe you won't. You won't ma yeah. <laughs> maybe <laughs> then but but on the yeah. other hand it's like it's all about content yeah um and it's about action 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 I think with small businesses it just drives me crazy because everything has to be perfect um and I feel like if you have put some thought into it and you know what you want to do 
you know, yeah, if you have some ideas to improve it here and there and it doesn't um, take make it take a lot longer, like we're always trying to make it take less time because I want the whole team to be happy and excited about what we're doing. So I don't want to drive everybody crazy. So we keep it really simple, smart. really focused. Yeah. I spend a lot of time ahead of time so that when the shoot happens, it, it goes fairly quickly. The first couple are a little bit like, oh, OK, we should maybe plan that a little bit different next time. But as far as clothing changes, I, I would recommend I no, like I would recommend no, because exactly our say. instinct as business owners is then it's one more reason to put it off. That's exactly right. And and it, like, who cares? Right. I mean, good night. I, there's there's people I mean, people do me. care, but there, I, mean, I judge well, them. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like nobody on Facebook is going to see a video that you did this week and then see the next video you did next week. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, she's wearing the same blouse. And we kind of mix them up, crap, too. Right? So we don't I mean, like we kind of heart, you know, and yeah. I, I mean, I talk about auction, but. Um, but as far as sending them out, they, two might go out in a row. Yeah. Um, but I watch Shark Tank all the time, and they wear the same outfits they for do. like four episodes. You know why? So because they go, and they it's film one shot. All day long. Yeah. yeah. So it, the content is more important than all that other crap. Like I would just it stop is. worrying about. 100%. But if you love it, I think if it's part of your passion that you are like Ginger, I know you, and I know you're really creative. So if you're thinking like, oh, but I would love doing that, do it. You know. But if it's something that stops you from doing it, don't. Absolutely. Okay. I completely agree. So. Jeff has a question, and um, this is the last question, and then I'll get a couple more in. Um, what is the best day and time for Facebook videos? <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic question. I get asked that a lot. Um, so, you know, I'm going to approach this from an organic post um, okay. platform, yeah. and then we'll do a paid post platform. So organic, if you're making an organic post, which means you're not putting any dollars on getting it out to eyeballs, you're not paying Facebook to push it out. Uh, to viewers, okay? If you're just posting work organically, um, think about when do you generally go on Facebook, okay? So if I'm making an organic post for a company, I'm going to generally make it very early in the morning, like 6 a.m. when people get up and they're checking their phones. It's the mm-hmm. first thing they do. It's what I do. It's what my wife does. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to also maybe push out a post at noon. Mm-hmm. If I'm, You also want to push out too many posts on Facebook throughout the course of the day. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you're trying to decide when to make an organic post, early morning, people are getting out of bed. 5, 6 a.m., lunchtime, maybe between noon and 2-ish. Mm-hmm. I generally don't post anything in the afternoon for an organic post because people mm-hmm. are at their desk, they're at their office, they're out driving, they're running errands. And then I never post anything around dinner time, generally speaking, usually late at night when people are going to bed. What do they do again? They check again. Mm-hmm. So between 10 and midnight, I would say, is probably the evening mm-hmm. um, sweet spot as well. Uh, to make a post. Those are organic posts. Can I just okay? bust in about that too? Okay, so we managed... Um, social media posts and I have to say that it does matter what time it is less and less is it mattering what time it is too it's true um and the other because as soon as someone comments it's like back at the top so having said that we also want to optimize like we suck every juice out of everything that we can do so if there's a best time to post we want to make sure to do that and there's two answers that we use to figuring this out if you have a new page and you don't have a lot of followers you're going to need to do what Kyle just said like just Like throw stuff out there. When are you, think about your clients. What are they doing? What are their behaviors? If you're a fitness person, you better get that post in by 5 a.m. And then again, like at noon or 1130, like when people are just about ready to be sick of work and it's not quite lunch yet, that's when you want to post. The other thing is, is if you have a page and you have some followers, go into your page and click on insights insights and then go to posts because it will show and actually Taylor and I are going to do an upcoming um, uh, chat and grow about this where uh, we're going to show you how to go in this is how you look at your insights it'll show you like days um, when your people are actually on and active and so for each day it's like okay this is if you open up that day it's like okay this is the time of that day so we have clients where some of them, we don't post at all on the weekends. And, and honestly, for us, our people are actually active on the weekends. And if we post on the weekends, it's only Sunday night because I get offended when I have to think about work on the weekends. So just in our own business, I don't really like posting on the weekends. But some people, it's like posting on the weekends. I mean, if we're, a, you know, like a fly fishing guide, you better be posting on the weekends. Like that's when the, all the really fun stuff happens. So uh, know your industry, know your audience. When do they want to hear something from you and put it out there? Because they're, it's not just about when they're active. It's about when do they want to hear what you have to say. But so there's there's that. There's look at Facebook insights. And then another thing is, is if you use a 
social media scheduling platforms, some of them have best times calculators. And so use that. So I'm not going to go on. I could go on all day because I just love like I just love this whole thing. So but we will um, bring that up again. But well, so that's that's organic. That's fantastic insight, you know, and I think it is very much based on industry. Mm -hmm. You brought up a good point with like the fitness industry, you know, I mean, when are your users going to be going to the gym? Or, right. Like, it's going to be super early. Or not. Or thinking or about not going to the gym. Not, right. And when they should. Yeah. And you know? then there you are. So, Look at I'm the hero. I'm telling you to go to the gym and giving <laughs> you some really great quote, you so, know. Yeah. So, yeah. I completely agree. So you had some insight about paid. Yeah, so, so you know, it, as far as paid posts go, um, you know, essentially you are now paying for those views whenever somebody is on, on Facebook, uh, which is fantastic. So you don't have to worry so much about when that ad is going out there and are you hitting the right person at the right time. You're paying Facebook to get those views. So, you know, they're, that way you are um, getting your content out to people um, when they're just on their phone, period. And mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about when it's popping up in that timeline. Right. Um, you know, and you can get very specific when you run a campaign. I mean, you can run, you know, what, <laughs> what part of town you want the campaign right. in and what kind of people, uh, you know, you can even decide, uh, put in there on the campaign when you're setting it up, when that ad does pop up too right. on people's phones. Maybe you're only wanting to hit, um, a pre-lunch crowd for whatever reason. Maybe you have a lunch stand that you're trying to operate and you want to get everybody from when they get up till 10.30 or 11 o'clock. You can boost your ads, put a con some content on, and it starts at 6 a.m. and it will show up on people's cell phones when they're checking Facebook until 10.30 or 11 o'clock. Right. And that's the only time that it shows up. So there's ways that you can mess around with it too. Um, but you don't generally have to worry about the time that you're posting content if you're boosting it. Exactly. Much. Well, and just to kind of add to that, that's so true. Um, now, anyone who's talked to me or worked with me knows that I'm kind of a control freak. So, you know, when I do things, I'm all like, oh, my gosh, make sure your website's built right. You know, so I'm, I'm really nosy about things. And so my initial approach to ads was like, I want to pick when I want to say how much I spend. I want to, but I don't do that at all anymore. And it goes back to what I said earlier, which is Facebook puts a lot of money into studying stuff. They do. And one thing that they want is for their advertiser to make money. Because when you put that post out there, for one thing, their rules are so that you can be successful. I mean, not because they're like, oh, I love small business, but I mean, they might, but, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'm thinking that that's not their, their yeah. motivator. No, I'm thinking think so that either. it's for money. However, yeah. if you are an advertiser and you are like, I just want to spend, and, they, and they'll tell you like, oh, all you have to do is spend $20. If they're going to actually say that to you, they're going to want you to make some money on it mm -hmm. because they're going to want you to spend 40 <laughs> And so I have learned to go, okay, I trust Facebook. And not to say that I that, that doesn't change. I mean, I could right. I could be saying something completely different in two months. This is a yeah. very fast-changing <laughs> industry. That it is. At yeah. this moment in time right now, I feel like Facebook is highly motivated for advertisers to make money. So, well, that was awesome. I hope that that helped you, Ginger, on that. Um, or, yeah, uh, um, Jeff, I'm sorry you asked that last one. Right. Um, I did want to ask, is it, first of all, before I go to my last question, is there anything else that you want to be sure that business owners, entrepreneurs, and brands know before we go? You know, I, um, I'm going to try to keep it very, very simple because we've gone in a lot of detail on things. So if there's like a nugget, it's don't get so – keep things simple. Mm -hmm. I think just keep it simple. And I think a lot of times when you are talking about social media or you're talking about tech, and by you, I don't mean you. I mean in <laughs> no, general. No, me. I have I, a geek I mean, leg I'm we, getting, so don't worry. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, you know, when we – Mm -hmm. as a business industry right are, are, it tends to be very complex i mean we're talking about algorithms we're talking about reports and we're talking about demographics and we're mm -hmm. talking about when to post and when not to post and how much money and uh, all of that stuff it gets very stressful mm -hmm. heavy I, and it's yeah. very heavy for us it's different because these this is our business i mean well, we if this was your business yeah. yeah we get excited <laughs> like about woo, it. tell I me mean, about algorithms yeah I, if, <laughs> you know but if you own a t-shirt shop i, I yeah. mean you know you're all about your t-shirt shop exactly. so i think at the end of the day it's keep your messaging simple mm -hmm. and how do you keep it simple well dig down deep inside and think about what it was that made you start your company right and honestly mm -hmm. and if you can if you can get that out in emotion and just through dialogue mm -hmm. on camera and get it out to the masses whatever that fire was inside of you that got you to start your company and start this vision that you had and become a success that you're wanting to become 
if you can just get that message out, if it jump started you, it'll jump start somebody else. It's super attractive. And, like I mean, when people really are attracted is. to that, yeah. They're, yeah, they, they just want to see it. Mm-hmm. They want to see something that's exciting and passionate. Mm-hmm. And if there's any Obviously, one of the core principles of excitement, law, mm-hmm. law. That's what that's what the end user, looking for content. That's a human, so raw human. Content. Yeah, and that ultimately will lead to. Sales. I mean, all of this is about sales. At the end right. of the day, it right. is all about money. But I marketing mean, sets up for sales. So sales exactly are transactional and marketing is more building to that. That's exactly That's a good it nugget. Yeah. That's really good. That's, yeah, that's good. There's one. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, okay, let's move on to our foodie fact. So this is going to be, I know I I was so wound up with Jessica and I'm going to try to, I'm trying to calm down by the end because by the end I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, that's oh, in thing. fact, that that's one thing I was going to say that I was thinking of was, um, it all comes down to two, like I, I was listening to you about being excited about our business and ha- having that come through on video. The one thing um, I just want to encourage people, if you feel like you're quiet, um, I work with some business owners that they're really chill, but um, you do not have to be wound up to be passionate or be excited. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people I know that as soon as they start talking about what they do, I see it. Like there's that spark and so I feel like um, all you have to do is just share that. So in your own personality, um, that's what people want to know because um, they're going to connect with you. So even if, if you're afraid to do video because you feel like, yeah, but you guys are all like super excited and, and you said to be excited and passionate, it, it just looks different for everybody. And so don't feel like your style is going to get in the way. It won't. Um, how you do that's you're the human they're going to see when they come to you so if you can let that come through on video somehow um that's that's really i think what you're trying to say it's yeah, just like whoever exactly you I mean. are i just don't want someone to be afraid like no yeah you you don't have to be i mean on all the time yeah. um, and don't you be if you're not normally because that's not right because normal. then that also translates <laughs> that's awkward. It's awkward yeah and it's just like oh yeah that, just be that's you weird yeah so, that's yeah. exactly what we're saying you know just be you and there's some fine tuning you can do. I mean, if you don't have this, just like you know, exciting, like yeah. come on, in, you know, type yeah. of thing. Uh, you know, there, there's different ways that that you can. I mean, just watch yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, just watch your video back. Have a video oh gosh, play but people don't like that. Like that, I know. Freak but them out. you know what? It freaks you out. But it's like the best form of yeah. criticism. Maybe wait a month and it's then be- watch it because then you're like, oh, I wasn't that bad. Know, <laughs> I come from the television industry, so I was constantly watching myself back right. and being like, oh wow, well, I shouldn't do that or I shouldn't do that. I mean, you can go overboard. Yeah. But a lot of times you can be like, hey, you know what? I could probably have said that a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Or I'm trying to just build off of what you're saying. Yeah. Is that if you're not 110% high personality, be who you are. Mm-hmm. And you can always critique it in a little way mm-hmm. to make it better and make it still people relate to. Because you, people don't always just relate. There are, honestly, there's 50% of the people that hate to see somebody just right. turned on all the time. Like, yeah. whoa, that's yeah. a little much, right? Some people um, are going to be like, oh, so thank there's, you. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a place in marketing for, for all personalities. Right. Um, so, so don't yeah. be afraid. Just do don't it. Be afraid. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Last question. Um, foodie facts. So I am a huge foodie. Anybody who too. knows me, I talk about food all the time in our meetings here at OMH. It's not uncommon for us to talk about where we ate. In fact, it's not uncommon at any point in any day to talk about food. And um, I just am obsessed. So, so at the end of these, I want to ask a foodie fact. Um, what? Kyle, please tell me, what is your favorite dish or ingredient? Out of all of the questions that I've had to field today, this was the most difficult. Favorite is a horrible question. I think it's like, what what is something that you like? Let me rephrase that. What is a dish or ingredient that you like? All right. So I gauged answering this question on, is there some kind of food that even when I'm sick? Okay. That's a good, that's a very good way to filter. My food is pizza. I was actually just sick this week. I, I had the flu this week earlier, and I was craving pizza. Okay. And 
and pizza is my all-time favorite. So what do you like on your pizza? So I, I, I have celiac disease. Okay. Um, which means I have to eat gluten-free. Right. <laughs> which is hard for a foodie because I am a foodie. And a pizza my wife, eater. I can eat all the time. Yeah, yeah. pizza's hard. Uh, it is. Yeah. So just as a fun fact, here's some free advertising. Um, <laughs> it, the best gluten-free pizza that I found in town is at Tarantino's. Oh, no way. Yeah, really? It's phenomenal. Um, but we haven't tried it, and we don't eat gluten, so... Oh, really? Yeah, and we don't it's... eat cheese, but we will, oh, we will oh, for geez. good pizza. There you go. So. <laughs> well, it's worth it. It's worth it on We're sick the next pizza. day, but yeah. <laughs> well, that that's. But that's awesome. That so sucks. Tarantino's, Tarantino's, okay. Tarantino's fantastic. Very, you know, awesome local establishment. So if you haven't been in there anyways, but their regular pizza is phenomenal, too. Mm-hmm. I just haven't tasted it. What I like to say is the best is yet to come. It's true for us. Make sure that it's true for you. So thanks so much. Thanks, Kyle, Thank and thanks you. to everyone for coming.